Hello, this is another episode of Moraine Reads. My name is Joe Malarkey. I'm from the library. And back in December, Illinois picked their fifth poet laureate, a writer that I admire and have admired for longer than I care to say, and she probably would care to say, Miss Angela Jackson. And I want to read three of her poems to introduce her or reintroduce her to the bunch of you. Um, the first two are what are called spider poems. They're from a collection she wrote where she envisions black women as spiders in the culture. It was called Dark Legs and Silk Kisses, The Beatitudes of the Spinner. The first one is a rebuttal to a Greek myth. It's the Greek myth of Arachnia. Arachnia was a mortal woman who gained fame far and wide for her ability to weave pictorial tapestries. Now, the goddess Athena, the goddess of weaving, took issue with this fame, and so she challenged Arachnia to a contest. Athena's rules, of course. What they were to do was to weave a tapestry of the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus at play. And that's just what Athena did. Now Arachnia, well, she took the low road. She wove a tapestry of the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus having sex. Or, as we used to say in my day, screwing. Athena was furious. And so, according to legend, she cursed Arachnia to live out the rest of her days as a spider. And that's a story I knew until Miss Jackson told this Arachnia, her side of the story. What Athena weaves best is lies. Her and her whole Olympus family, wolf pack of liars. She said she was my teacher and I, swollen imitator ungrateful student. You believe that one? My body is a busy dark flower from the dark continent her daddy ransacked, plundered my pots, my libraries, my stars, my gods. I wasn't from Lydia either. Wrong girl's name. I'm the dusky girl from Memphis. What Athena weaves best is lies. Propaganda issued from Olympus. A threat of deception where stuff sticks to the history books. You believe that one? I wove the real story. I only embroidered the truth, made it shinier, and it could be seen. She embroidered seamy press releases for the wolf pack. It sits high on the mountain. She called me blasphemer, perjurer. She slapped me until I spun. She says she sent me to a corner and I hang myself. You believe that one? That she cursed me and would not let me die? It was a lynch rope my Grecian girl wove for me. It was a lynch rope she spun, lay and waited for me in a spooky house. Wolves bayed in the distance, but I didn't listen. I was busy looking at the sun god out a dirty window, weaving his tapestry when she fell on me. It was my murder, but not my death. You see this web? 
You ever seen anything like it in this haunted house world? I am still working my charms quietly. And this next poem is so special to me because it gave me back two hours of my childhood. Okay, every Saturday morning, I used to have the TV in a house full of people. Okay, 10 people lived in my house, eight kids, two parents. Okay, but nobody wanted to watch all these um, sci-fi movies with me on Saturday morning. On channel 32 WFLD okay and I never met anybody who ever saw this movie besides me and it, but it stuck with me it was called the spider from 1958 okay and this is Miss Jackson's retelling of the story Oop, spoiler alert it's going to tell you the end, okay? And she refers to it as Rock and Roll Monster, Down Home Blues Goes Holly, dedicated to 5527 and the television tribe. She was sitting in her blue. I'm going to keep going. She was sitting in her black juke cave, listening to blues, eating bats, and getting fat when the light bread people came. She ate the first man for a snack. Then the daughter came with yellow celery down her back and a boyfriend, and pretty soon a hippie blues spider can't win. They took her in, put her on drugs, propped her in a museum took her blues away, and she slept, numb, out of it, roped in and stupid, captured, came alive in a museum in 1957. Some white kids were playing rock and roll before their mashed potatoes, loud enough to wake the dead or dopey, woke the rock and roll in her pitch bush body, she got up on the wrong side of no bed. Hair standing all over her head, catching radio waves. The voice of God, she thought it was. She just wanted to put her hand on the music box and be saved. Sounded like somebody she knew from back home. But no, indeed. They snatched a bumpy tune and fled scattered down Main Street with her musical treat. All she longed for was a good meal after a long sleep. Evil gale blues under her swampy lid, crashed a fine unshaved leg through teeny tiny whitey trim window like a black whip snapping law and order. Watched the pastel people pee and flee, stalk high-heeled blondes with screaming Brussels sprouts in their arms, all looking good enough to eat, but rescued in the nick of time. Monster want to rock and roll in her own bed, back in the juke joint cave. She moonlight her regal walk on home, ate sheriff intruder at her leisure. His whole body hors d'oeuvres, his skeleton left an empty Lazy Susan. She just want to pick her teeth, snap her fingers, drink a Bloody Mary, and listen to some down-home blues. Loud. She want to lay around with her hair wild and legs on style, smell her own funk, and dream the rest of her gay black night. Got instead a mouthful of dynamite. Ain't that cold-blooded? And this last poem is a human-animal interaction of, of a different species, okay? And um, one of my longtime favorites. Um, this is called 
the love of travelers. Doris, Sandra, and Cheryl. At the rest stop on the way to Mississippi, we found the butterfly mired in the oil slick, its wings thick and blunted. One of us, tender in the fingertips, smoothed with a tissue the oil that came off only a little. The oil smeared wings like lips colored with lipstick blotted before a kiss. So delicate, the cleansing of the wings. I thought the color soft as watercolors would wash off under the method of her mercy for something so slight and graceful, injured beyond the love of travelers. It was torn then, even after her kindest work, the almost moth, exquisite charity could not mend. What weighted the wing melded with it, then ruptured it in release. The body of the thing lifted out of its place between the washed wings. Imagine the agony of a self separated by gentlest repair. Should we kill it? One of us said. And I said yes, but none of us had the nerve. We walked away, the last of the oil welding the butterfly to the wood of the picnic table. The wings stuck out and quivered when the wind went by. Whoever found it must have marveled at this and loved it for what it was and had been. I think meticulous mercy is the work of travelers and leaving things as they are punishment or reward. I have died for the smallest things. Nothing washes off. Oh, thank you, Miss Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you who are interested, her collected works, Let All These Roads Be Luminous, is available in the Moraine Library. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading. Bye-bye.